Alright guys, <clears throat> well, we narrowly escaped, uh, <laughs> I don't know what we just narrowly escaped here in Doomsday Trailer on uh, this lovely Thursday, April 11th. Good God Almighty, you should have seen what just blew through here, but the sun is coming back out again over the end times here in the collapse of everything and uh guys I, I don't know why i waste my time doing this but i i you know i just can't stand this shit uh you know i'm, I'm over here on the mainstream media uh on the i guess you would call this the bleeding part uh little lefty social justice warrior media. Well, this is straight out uh, Associated Press. You can't get any more mainstream media than this, uh, you know, trying to kind of balance out the, uh, you know, the Trump-tard anti-immigrant speech. Uh, and they're going down to Guatemala, where I have spent a lot of time with uh, down there in Guatemala and Guatemala, Guatemala and the Western Highlands. The Western Highlands of Guatemala are predominantly populated by, I guess they're called themselves the Quechua or something. Now, anyway, what it is, it's the survivors of the Mayan civilization who live there, uh, who've already been through this story before. And, you know, keep in mind the Mayan civilization had already collapsed before Honky ever got there. So you, this is one you can't pin on Honky. When Honky got there, uh, you, know, you know, around 1500, uh, they, they had already collapsed. And uh, we've been scratching our heads trying to figure out why and maybe just maybe i don't know guys but maybe just maybe this story in the uh long story which i'm uh, not gonna sit here and read this whole thing uh from the associated press and the 2024 uh mainstream media might have a little kernel of explanation of what happened to the Mayans. I, I honestly don't know. I'm throwing this out there. It's just something to think about. This story uh, titled Desperate Young, Gua Desperate Young Guatemalans Try to Reach the U.S. Even After Horrific Deaths of migrating relatives. So they're down there, uh, you know, tracking down the families and their little, uh, their, their little one room <coughs> mud huts. You know, they, they still live in, in mud huts and tin shacks down there. The, these little one room, you know, about the size of my tiny house. Uh, my tiny house is up there in New York. Uh, is, is these 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 little one room shacks they're talking about? You know, tracking down these different families down there uh, who have actually had you know family members, the, the, these young hopeless Guatemalans with absolutely no future, uh, risking their lives. Uh, to, to get their asses to the U.S., uh, you know, to get a piece of this pie up here. And so it, it, it is what it is, this story. It, go, it, it goes on and on and on, uh, it, it, you know, interviewing all the, the tearful parents and the siblings, uh... Uh, you, you know, th th this this is the opening sentence from one of these little villages up there in the western highlands of Guatemala called Comitancillo, Guatemala. 
every night for nearly two years, Glendy Ramirez has prayed by the altar in her parents' mud brick bedroom where under a large crucifix is a picture of her sister Blanca. The 23-year-old died alongside 50 other migrants in a smuggler's tractor trailer in Texas. You might remember reading that story. So uh, anyway, they tell that story of how those 50 migrants from Guatemala ended up roasting to death in the back of that 18-wheeler after the guy was scared of getting caught and fled. Anyway, uh, you probably remember uh, there. So I guess what they're doing is interviewing uh, the, the parents and the siblings of uh, the people who died in, in that tractor trailer accident a couple of years ago and these other uh, ones you've probably heard about. Uh, where these, these, we're talking mostly teenagers, we're mostly talking 12 to 25 year olds uh, traveling usually 9 out of 10 without their parents <coughs> uh, <but coughs> because their parents still had all of these babies uh, left in, in their one room huts and uh, so I'm, I'm just going to pick out a little bit. I, I will put the link on here. You can read this entire story to yourself. Uh, the record high number of migrants illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border have made migration a top concern in the U.S. presidential election year. Among those migrants, the largest group of unaccompanied minors has been from Guatemala, nearly 50,000 of the 137,000 encounters, you know, officially in the record by border authorities last year. Uh, most come from tiny hamlets in the predominantly indigenous western highlands. Uh, daily wages top out around the equivalent of nine dollars far below the supposed legal minimum uh, anyway uh, so they they, they they just talk uh, about this grinding poverty this grinding poverty uh, down there as they, uh, where is it, uh, we're talking to one of these social workers, good God, this thing, okay, uh, the primary driver, <clears throat> the primary driver of migration is the inability to get jobs to pay for the most basic necessities, said Ursula Roldan uh, from some university in Guatemala City. Uh, and then rising violence in the Mexico-Guatemala border region is also pushing more migrants ahead to the U.S. So anyway, <coughs> damn it. And then of course down the list, climate change. Climate change is now affecting even subsistence farming. All right, so the number one reason we have 50,000 uh, young Guatemalans risking their lives uh, to uh, get here to, I don't know, find jobs. I, I wish they were here looking for a job at, uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I just got off uh, the, the phone with these Amish kids up there. Uh, talk. I just got off the phone with these Amish kids. Uh, trying to find out whether they were going to be available 
uh, to work uh, this summer. So I've, I've raised their wages to $25 an hour, and they just said, Sam, we are so slammed this summer, uh, basically telling me uh, that they might have a day or two to help me out when I first get back. But don't count on the Amish kids to uh, to do any work around bugs in a jar farm. But anyway, I'm getting off uh, on, on my own whine. Uh, I have never seen a young Guatemalan uh, immigrant anywhere near Ithaca, New York, and I have looked. So anyway, so we have obviously grinding poverty, rising violence, and moving up the ranks, climate change are the three reasons that all of these social workers are scratching their heads. Okay, well let's see, uh, I'm just going to, to just, just comb through here. Uh, this is a long story uh, talking about all of the hell. Uh, all right. One of the handful of fathers, you know, this is, they're talking, they had this big meeting, I guess is where this reporter was meeting these people. One of the handful of fathers at the meeting was Virgilio Ambrosio, the eldest of his eight children, the eldest of his eight children, Celestina Carolina was making less than $90 a month as a housekeeper in Guatemala City. So she took off, uh, she was an old woman at the age of 23 to die of uh, asphyxiation in the back of a trailer. But don't worry, <clears throat> he still had seven more children. Now that his oldest daughter was dead in the back of a truck, oh well, uh, I still have seven more children. And I don't know how many more children uh, 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 on the way. So that is that family. Uh, let's see. Let's find a couple of more of these uh, interviews. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> In their one-room home, Reina Coronado tried to convince the eight children she had <coughs> since she married at age 16 that they did not have to risk their lives. Some went north anyway. Yes. <coughs> uh, so he ended up... Uh, I don't know how he ended up uh, dead. <clears throat> the last thing, I guess she, uh, her, her daughter uh, Blanca, the last thing uh, she told her mother was that she'd go only for four years and send money to build a kitchen so <clears throat> she, meaning her mother, would not have to cook tortillas over an open fire. Next came the call that made her cry for months. Yeah, so that was that one. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Okay, let's look at... Uh, the uh, Tomas family. Um, looking at uh, Anderson Pablo. Anderson Pablo. Uh, 
<clears throat> who uh, took his chance uh, and ended up dead. Anderson was in the ninth grade when the corona panic hit, and he started working in the fields alongside his father. The wages of around $6 a day were enough to afford tortillas each day for the family of 11. So they could afford tortillas to feed their family of 11, but not anything to, to go along with them. So they were basically, uh, they, they were basically uh, the, the family of, of 11 living in their mud hut were, uh, were, were basically eating tortillas. Uh, then 12 days after he left home, news of the massacre arrived. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Do we have any more? Let's see if we can get one more of these tragedies. Uh, his dream was to earn enough money to move the family from their one-room mud brick house to a concrete one with separate spaces for his parents, his brothers, and his sisters. And guys, I, 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 am I the only one who's got such a sick, twisted mind where I, uh, where I, where the hell do these people find any privacy to fuck the, 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 these parents? They've got nine kids living in, in one room. Where the, I guess they go out in the cornfield to fuck? Uh, there was one more in here, uh, that I, th this is a long article, uh, where was, there was one more in here about a 37-year-old woman uh, well, anyway, it, it is too buried. And then they had one more uh, interview with a 37-year-old mother of 10. A 37-year-old mother of 10. We, we have, you know, assumedly living in a one-room shack. Uh, we, we have the family of 11, we have two families with eight children, and, and you are telling me that it is the grinding poverty uh, that, that is the main driver of immigration to the U.S. The only thing that is grinding in, uh, in, in, uh, in Guatemala besides the tortilla grinding stone it, it, it is these clueless fucking moron breeders grinding. And as I say, where the fuck do, do they find any privacy to do their grinding? And, and, and you know, guys, I, I, I'm just wondering. I, I, I mean, I'm just wondering. So, okay. So these, the, the, these uh, 16 year olds get married in Guatemala, these, uh, the, basically these Mayan Indians in this case, uh, who have already uh, been through one collapse. <clears throat> okay, so they get married when they're 16, they move into <clears throat> a one-room mud hut, and, and they have, if they're lucky, about a quarter acre uh, uh, cornfield and bean field to live off of. So, they have one child, two children, three children, four children, five children, six children, seven children, eight children, nine children, ten children, 
Uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm beginning to see a pattern here. Uh, and, and, and like, like at what point, how many kids do, do, do these clueless fucking moron breeders uh, have to have, you know, they're, they're living in a fucking one-room mud hut trying to scrounge enough cornmeal to make tortillas. Uh, it, 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 were they, it doesn't say in here that, you know, they were living in a comfortable three-bedroom home uh, in a leafy suburb uh, of uh, Guatemala City, like Antigua. It, you know, it doesn't say that they were, uh, you, you know, upper middle class successful uh, Guatemalan businessmen in Antigua l living in a beautiful home, uh, you know, feeding their kids uh, a, a, a healthy diet and whatnot. Uh, maybe they were and something happened that they don't talk about in the story and, and these clueless fucking morons uh, got kicked out of their comfortable upper middle class home in Antigua and uh, got booted back up to the Mayan Highlands, which is what they're called. They used to be called the Mayan Highlands. I think now down there it's kind of considered racist to call these guys Mayan Indians. Uh, so I can't remember, am I getting the Quichua? I am always get Guatemala and Peru mixed up. In, in Guatemala, it's the descendants of the collapsed Mayan uh, civilization. In Peru, we're talking about the descendants of the collapsed Inca civilization. Now, Honky had a little more to do with the Incas. Uh, than the Mayas, I, I, but, I, but I'm not fucking buying it. I'm not buying it for a minute. There is one reason for the migration to the United States. There is one reason that 50,000 uh, young Guatemalans uh, tried uh, to, to get here last year. There's one reason that all of these uh, young Guatemalans ended up frying in the back of that 18-wheeler. The reason is because they were born. These clueless fucking moron parents need to start taking some fucking responsibility for it. If you are not born, you cannot die in the back of an overheated uh, tractor trailer in Texas. Cannot happen. Physically impossible for a person never born to die in the back of a truck. Now it is quite possible for a person who never should have been born to die in the back of a truck. The, 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 these clueless fucking moron breeders, they have no fucking business uh, grinding and, and, and then off their kids go uh, to, to bring that mindset to this country. This is why I say uh, my immigration policy, you get to step into this fucking country and go help Sam up at Bugs in a Jar Farm, vasectomy clinic to the right, tubal ligation clinic to the left. As soon as you get sterilized, come on in and uh, join the melting pot, but don't bring your fucking, uh, don't bring this, this fucking uh, a, a, a little cultural artifact with you. All right, we will let you in, but don't think you're gonna come over here and, and, and spit out uh, eight or 10 kids and, and start holding your fucking hand out. Uh, to uh, to the damn taxpayers. This is the reason that Donald Trump is going to be in the White House.
the reason Donald Trump is going back into the White House is because these clueless fucking morons in Guatemala and Honduras and Venezuela and everywhere, they can't keep their fucking pecker in their pants and they cannot stop letting their knickers down. They cannot do it. Uh, they don't care if they're fucking starving, if their children are starving. They are going to keep on grinding and the fucking mainstream media is never going to have the fucking balls to call this shit out. Nowhere, nowhere is the word overpopulation anywhere mentioned in this story. Never will be. Gee, why do we have 50,000 young Guatemalans? Try to get into the United States. Let's look at the population, okay? Uh, population of Guatemala. All right. In 2022, the population of Guatemala was 17.3 million. So what was the population of Guatemala in 2000? 11.6. So you got to understand, I, I think Guatemala, if I recall, is about the size of the state of Louisiana. So uh, 11 point, so in 22 years, so they already had 11.6 million people in, the, in that shit all country uh, in, in, in the year 2000. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, almost 6 million. That's uh, pretty much there that they added 50% of their population uh, between 2000 and 2022, uh, there were already too goddamn many people uh, down there in Guatemala in, in, in the year 2000, and, and, and 50 percent, uh, between 2000 and 2022, almost 6 million uh, more, more six million. That that's probably uh, what about three Guatemala cities between the year two thousand and the year twenty twenty two. Six million, three new Guatemala cities uh, a a added to a country I think about the size of Louisiana. Uh, it's unfucking believable. Uh, and, and you will not hear uh, the, the, these little cowardly chicken shits in, in the mainstream media uh, talk about the, the, the fucking reason for this immigration crisis. And you sure as shit ain't ever going to hear. And, and, and I guarantee you, if you <clears throat> suggested to a Trump tard, okay? It, 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 that, 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 that Donald, if Donald Trump uh, wants to lose his MAGA base, if Donald Trump got out there and said, how about this for an idea? Vasectomies to the right, tubal ligations to the left, uh, his own Trump tards uh, and Alex Jones and, and all the rest of uh, those guys would be calling him a eugenicist. You know, uh, anyway, uh, I will wrap up this broken record rant and uh, go forage for some tortillas. All of this talk about uh, all of these Guatemalans, I think I'm going to head up to the Mexican restaurant. Don Pepe's or whatever it's called and get me a uh, a tortilla stuffed with one of my dead fellow earthlings while I still can. Bye guys.